Um, I think we have uh, some issue with uh, your audio. <laughs> and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a couple newcomers to the temple. The double-headed monster res responsible f responsible for the upcoming arcane platform, and pre and previously responsible for the Bistar for the Bistarium community. In the blue in the blue corner, the CEO of Ar of arcane, Pietro Cavagnoli, and yeah. in the red Hello. corner. We have the CTO of the of the of this particular endeavor, Matteo Scavagnoli, and I I know I got it I know I screwed it up but I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no problem. How how you two doing today or tonight? I guess I guess would be more apropos over there. Yeah, we're we're fine. We're, we're fine. fine. Thank you for having us in your uh, your open bar. Mm -hmm. Um. So one of the traditions around here is opening with the humble beginnings. With that kind of thing in mind, I I'd like you to walk me I'd like you two to walk me through your respective um first introduction to role playing games and what was it that made it stick. Yeah. Uh so our experience in role playing games personally my experience with role games role playing games started with uh, uh, Matteo that uh, he uh, met uh, one of our common friends and uh, he was uh, at first introduced to the games and uh, was like, yo, Pietro, <laughs> <laughs> you have to, to check this out. We, we have, um, you have to know that we have uh, an, a very confused idea of what would be a uh, role-playing games, what uh, is a... Uh, about role playing games, we do not know very much. We have maybe a stereotypical view of that uh, type of, uh, of game. And uh, Matteo, that, that was yeah. at first was skeptical, introduced me while uh, having the first match and saying, "Well, you have to try this," and then introduced me. It was uh, maybe almost 10 years ago, maybe a little more, uh, a little less, seven years ago, eight years ago. I, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I let him handle the, <laughs> the explanation of our first match or introduction because it was the uh, the responsibility uh, comes to Matteo. Uh, we were gaming, uh, we were playing, uh, I think, uh, Pathfinder. Yeah, we started with Pathfinder, the first edition of Pathfinder. It was a very harsh introduction to the to the genre, I think. Talk, about, throw, about, talk the... about throwing yourself into the wolves. Eh, hey, well, uh, that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Or or as or um or as my as my mentor would as my mentor would often put it, um, swim, damn it, is how, <laughs> is how he is how he'd put is how he'd put it. The whole, the whole, the whole, and that's simply because his whole thing is just put is just throw someone in the deep end or have or have someone jump in have someone jump into the pool off of the high dive. Yeah, that, yeah, and that then, was uh, swim. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had we had to swim in that situation using your metaphor. Mm -hmm. We have to swim. That was uh, um, looking uh, in forward and the situation we are now that we create content on the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons, our beginnings on Pathfinder were, were very harsh because we had so many statistics to deal with. But uh, uh, the overall experience of our first uh, campaign was awesome. I don't know if there is uh, yes. the fact that it was uh, the first ex real experience with uh, role-playing games, but uh, even even after all that uh, complex uh, statistics uh, um, and etc., the final boss fight against that evil uh, creature that uh, I don't remember what uh, 
<laughs> was but uh, it, uh, I just remember the um, the fight and uh, all the amazing actions that we make. Uh, well, my ro the, the the time that I rolled a crit that uh, I ate a critic on the creature and it was very yeah I I defeated the monster but then uh, there is uh, the second phase uh, etc etc it was a really nice experience. Yes, you, we were playing uh, almost with a calculator on our side because uh, we had to, to calculate many <laughs> modifiers and uh, all the like. Uh, but uh, it was a very funny experience. And uh, when we switched uh, to uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e, uh, we were like, uh, where are the numbers? <laughs> well, if you want, if you want numbers, I can give, I can give you numbers. I've got a, I've got a few infamous entries that'll, do, that'll do that in spades. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, we, we are we, fine with that approach uh, now. Uh, we, I am fine with, uh, with what I studied. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't see. I, I don't want to see any numbers uh, <laughs> other than that. I mean, I've got I've got my copy of Roll I got my copy of Rollmaster in the back. I can break I can break out the critical hit tables from that book if you want. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Thank you. No, well, joking aside, uh, um, we played uh, Pathfinder for a very long time, but uh, uh, we sincerely prefer the the approach of uh, the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons because. Uh, it relies more on our opinion, of course. It relies more on uh, um, the interaction between the dungeon master and the player, and there is more flexibility on that side. With Pathfinder, we think that uh, many situation that was was uh, handled by by, by the, the book uh, were too complex and uh, yes, does they were not precise. They were precise, but, but uh, uh, does not uh, encourage the, the player to make uh, maybe collection on try collections because there is to uh, add that number, then subtract that number, then try this, uh, uh, <laughs> throw the dice, etc., etc., etc. But uh, that was our opinion, of course. I think that uh, many people, for maybe also our first followers on uh, on Bestiarum were uh, Pathfinder, for, uh, Pathfinder fans, so we do not want to, what can I say, to say bad words on the games that introduce us, but we prefer that approach. And generally, we overall, we appreciate all the role-playing games since we, the concept itself, we think it's very, very interesting and very inspiring for people and... Whenever we have the the opportunity, we try to introduce new people to to the game. Of course, uh, we have to take some precautions that <laughs> so uh, structure the um, the matches, the um, the campaigns to be more uh, suited to those uh, newcomers. But uh, it was uh, something that uh, really motivated us to introduce new people to the genre. All the genres, <laughs> Pathfinder doesn't, doesn't care, and to um, give them the opportunity to try it, at, at, at least try it, then they can decide to play it or not. Mm -hmm. It was our approach since the beginning. Yeah. Now, when it now um before the, now when it comes when it came to before actually actually before I get before I get to Arcane, I do I do mm -hmm. want to establish. A bit of a, a bit of a line of a bit of a line of evolution, which, me, which means, I'd ha which means I have to bring up um, Bistar Bistarium dot fan dot fantasy, um, which which just go which just going through that. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in in there. Um, what pro what prompted you guys to go to take the plunge from be from being players to be to being homebrewers to um. To eventually launching Bestarium. Well, uh, at first, Bestarium was a project that uh, doesn't not have a really um, precise direction. We just wanted to provide small pieces of creatures, 
we 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 wanted to create uh, bestiarium is like bestiary it comes mm -hmm. from latin a language mm -hmm. where we had the opportunity to study since it's really connected to italians mm -hmm. uh, bestiarium is a book of creatures so we want to create a book of creatures on instagram share images share concept type of creatures inspire people to create creatures themselves to create stories about uh, fantasy monsters etc themselves and we also took uh, many uh, creatures from uh, uh, manuals or also creatures that we invented ourselves and uh, create small uh, uh, small uh, pills of uh, that uh, talks, talks about that creature so we took uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, a central monster. We explain uh, its uh, behavior, how it uh, it is, uh, how you can find it in uh, the battles, and also uh, put some uh, very uh, use the first statistics that comes to mind. Uh, you can see the basic statistics, armor class, and uh, health points, uh, hit points. Uh, let's talk about Dungeons and Dragons. It was uh, like uh, a way to. Uh, give uh, inspiration more than mm, something that uh, we create uh, and uh, that people they can use then uh, after sometimes we um, get more involved in the creation aspect so we do we create more complex posts uh, with uh, and uh, a more complex lore that came from our mod we have um, our own new own brew world that we have not uh, explained very well but it is uh, there is uh, our own reward uh, that has uh, a lore an history and we um, talk about our own reward in our creatures that mm -hmm. we gradually makes more and more complex and more and more uh, detailed and more and more original in that case Yes, every creature adds uh, uh, links to our world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> and I, I, um, I've, I've seen that it's, it's, it's not just um, a collection of of monsters or monster stat blocks. You, there's a few, there's a few, it, there's a few adventure hooks and a few, a few, um, a few nods to what to <coughs> stories and and um, set and setting material. Yeah, because um, the, the um, adventure hooks is a, a <coughs> format that we introduced uh, uh, after some times, and uh, it's uh, all merit of Matteo. Mm -hmm. He has always handled the campaigns, and uh, um, he created a format that is very useful. I, I will let to explain him, but uh, is um, uh, trying to be very. <laughs> to to um, well in in that format is about uh, explaining a context and then providing many instructions and matteo we can uh, can explain it uh, yes. in proper uh, details because it is all its merit that uh, the <laughs> format is all its merit yes it's not uh, a complex proce procedure like uh, creating uh, a homebrew adventure uh, a whole homebrew adventures it gives uh, masters, uh, game masters, and uh, who wants to uh, create uh, his adventure uh, hints and uh, um, plot hooks to to help him develop the, his uh, ideas uh, in a very simple matter, uh, in a very simple manner. Sorry, and. Um, uh, highlighting the the key aspect that uh, the master should consider when uh, designing uh, this kind of adventure. Yeah, and man in many cases that uh, approach so explaining a uh, a situation uh, and then providing some instruction to players. So take care, uh, consider this element, uh, uh, take care about the, that uh, specific enemy that you might put into the adventure. That uh, hybrid approach was uh, quite successful uh, and uh, many <laughs> of our followers have, have particularly enjoyed certain adventures and uh, told us, uh, oh, did you create these uh, Umbria adventures? Can I play it? And we say, well, uh, 
no, but uh, we can try if uh, there is uh, enough interest. So uh, in that cases, we might probably consider to took these ints uh, and transform in our own version of uh, Unreal Adventure and propose to our followers and maybe uh, confront uh, with the creation of our followers. Maybe we can approach the same uh, uh, ad uh, adventure hook in different uh, ways. And that would be very, yes, very cool to some um, some of our followers actually followed the these hints and asked asked us about um, how to um, uh, ask us more uh, deep uh, questions, more tech uh, more technical questions. Yeah, they kind of arrive. They say, well, we have uh, take your inspiration and uh, we have arrived in that at that point. Uh, what do you suggest us uh, to to do? And uh, Matteo, which handles the this format, uh, comes and say, well, uh, we you could try you this. Uh, yes. Also, we want to be this format very open, like uh, the old days. We do not. Uh, provide uh, the lore and the expected like we do with our creatures today. We want to provide that uh, element of inspiration and creativity that we want uh, our followers to to handle, to to start from those inspiration and create something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, <laughs> that brings that brings us to arcane. Spelled yeah. with spelled with 3 A's. Um First, what I'm what I, the first thing I'd like to ask is how the idea of the, of this particular project came to be. Uh, we started thinking about uh, um, <clears throat> the issues about uh, pub uh, publishing Umbrella Adventures on the web at that situation. We had uh, an experience, we, had, uh, we, we follow other creators and uh, see that many of them or uses uh, Patreon or similar platforms or in other situation use uh, uh, established platforms. We have seen that uh, in all these cases, in particular, uh, this started with a conversation with another important community that we would like to shout out because uh, they are called uh, Quelli Kill Bardo, our three Italian guys, very, very uh, competent game masters. Mm -hmm. With them, we have realized that uh, in all these aspects, uh, creators of homebrew contents might have struggles uh, on, do on two aspects. On the, on the first side, the promotion aspect. So you have to post a lot. Uh, create engagement, create followers, promote your content that they might subscribe to your Patreon. You have to follow your Patreon. You have to maintain your Patreon. And uh, that might be very difficult to some uh, creators who just want that. Uh... to creators and um, we don't want to talk about the specific platforms but uh, many of them of the big established platform only gives half of the earnings to creators why uh, I why think I know exactly which platform you're talking about I'm not I'm not going to say it but I know <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are like well why <laughs> uh, only half they're selling ebooks well and that platform or other platforms uh, have many subscription uh, uh, elements, but all the content that are published inside are not uh, are, um, are um, does not give anything to the creator. So you can publish uh, on that other specific platform all the new content you want, but you will not earn anything. So we think about well, we can create a platform that. Uh, is affordable for the user so it does not have to pay each uh, content uh, one piece of the time or subscribe to many different patrons um, and at the same time we can provide also more earnings to creators while giving 
um, high percentage of the cut to creators and also providing the opportunity to uh, support the creators um, creating a huge library that where all the content is accessible with just a membership and the creators have the opportunity to uh, just publish the content without handling uh, uh, too much, uh, without uh, have to have many issues about promotion uh, and um, constant publications. They can publish whenever the content is ready and uh, have more tools to handle the community. Also, uh, we also recognize that uh, plat uh, platforms like Patreon, etc., um, does not to protect very well their content. If you see when you are on a streaming platform on Spotify, you can't download the the song. On, you can access the content offline, but you can't download it. On uh, those services, you can uh, just enter, grab the content and go away with paying and just leave. a membership and leave. <laughs> you pay a membership and download three years of materials that uh, and also have the opportunity to take the materials uh copy it and uh, go to another platform and promote it mm, and that's not... basically piracy so yeah. uh, so there is not uh, very much promo uh, protection about that so we also wanted to uh, help our creators to uh, have more protection on their content Oh, the way we are designing uh, Arcane is to have uh, more uh, um, less opportunities to uh, copy and export the content without the authorization of the creator. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the, uh, the main issues that uh, uh, gives us the idea and uh, the objective to create our platform, to create that kind of... Uh, solve that kind of uh, problems, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And and with that with that kind of thing in mind, um, let's get let's get let's get into into the into the kind of into the kind of brass tacks for for this kind of thing because addressing addressing a platform like Arcane is something that we is something that I have to do on two fronts. I have to I have to address this as a as a prospective you as a prospective subscriber. And as a and a prospective um, creator, creator. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, since it's going to be relatively simpler on that, let's start with let's start with the let's start with the um, subscriber end of things. So, as I under as I understand it, for um for a monthly fee, you're get you're get you're getting access to the to the um co to the content on the to the content on the um site, um. Yes. And yeah, exactly. When it comes to what sort of home, I know that in the past, in the your previous endeavor mainly focused on um, on G on GM facing materials, but when it comes to the content that you're shooting for for Arcane, are you aiming for both player facing and GM facing material? We on Arcane, we are focusing on uh, providing uh, all the type of content that. Uh, might be possible to create so equipment adventures uh creatures we want to um have all the complete spectrum and also we will we will like to um go also beyond the aspect of tabletop of ombre materials and enter into novels and uh, short stories giving also to creators the opportunity to express also in that form so all the users just uh, came in and uh, can find very and very uh, very different forms of uh, ombre content and also novels stories etc all created by the creators themselves and uh, also uh, every user can became a creator of course so that we have to provide uh, um uh, an example of uh, quality you have to, to um, demonstrate that you are able to create a story so we would like to be quite restrictive at first on the content that, that is published with uh, uh, people who have um, we are uh, trying to we are hiring uh, <laughs> not trying to be hiring people who will like who will uh, 
control the content and uh, review it. But in general, um, we want to have a complete spectrum and uh, give uh, all the opportunity to use to the user to have entertainment and inspirational content. Now and to become creators. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, and as far as far as as far as that process, I'll get I'll get to that in a minute. I ju I just want to focus on one side of the coin before I get to the other side of it. Um. Now in in the Kickstarter page, it talk it talks about it talks about being being a bit being a bit of a a bit of a bit of a a bit of a peer to peer um experience um in the in that reg in that regard are you are you a are you aiming for a bit are you aiming for a bit of decentralization with how with how certain net with how the with how the um site is going is going to be working we we like to, um yeah we would like to evolve in that uh in that um in that perspective mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at first we would like to maintain uh control on uh, on all the content in that case uh, we do not uh, uh, want to um our control is not a control like uh, that content can be published that content cannot be published as soon as the people follows uh the basic rules that uh, gives uh, that does not offend uh, anyone for example we don't want to have uh, n words <laughs> inside of the content but uh, that's basic uh, principles and uh, uh, as soon as people and follows other legal the... ones yeah and as soon as people follows the rules of the um open game license mm -hmm. All the content is uh, admitted inside the platform uh, and uh, create we want to give uh, um, even more opportunity to creators to be uh, in independent in their uh, in in the space we provide and uh, gradually we would like to be it uh, um, this space to be bigger mm -hmm. we give, want to give uh, more more uh, independence to creators without uh, 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 having problems to uh, bad content, uh, uh, copied content, or illegal or not uh, well, uh, or not politically correct content. Well, um, I know that politically correct is a big issue, so maybe it's not the right term. Uh, I would like to say that um, we don't want to publish that. Uh, content that might uh, offend people in a very strong way, like uh, sitting uh, and words, etc., will be published. In other cases, we would like also to defend uh, creative endeavor. So um, the way to say that uh, only politically correct content will be published is, uh, um, is not the case. I... It is a complex topic, of course, yeah. and we can talk it for a very, very long time, but we want to uh, stay on the line that uh, creators have the opportunity to create as soon as they do not offend other people, do not copy their content or violate uh, copyright uh, licenses. <laughs> I don't know if I, um, yeah, I explain I it uh, properly, but uh, that's our idea. I can um I can I can certainly get I can certainly get get where you get where you're going on that front. Um now this might this might be a bit this might be a bit long ball on my on my part, but a big thing that I'm that I'm a, that I'm a massive stick in the mud about is navigation. Um mm. being being a this be, navigation and more pertinent to something like this, organization. Um, yeah. <clears throat> given and given given that given that, especially since with a lot of with a lot of other platforms, it's basically a case of 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 everything is everything is on the everything is on the table because with a lot of them they're not um, focused specifically on D on D and D ex um, exclusively. <laughs> Now, what I, what I'm what I'm curious about is if is if there's been consideration 
on put on putting navigational tools so that if somebody is looking solely <laughs> for if someone is looking solely for adventure hooks or if someone is solely looking for um, setting ideas or for, or for um, or for classes or su or subclasses th that um, that they that they'd be able to just just look up under under <coughs> that kind of metric instead of having to jump about. Well, yeah, we... uh, the, the the library will be organized uh, in. Uh... We we thought about uh, tags, uh, folders, uh, and uh, all the like to make the navigation to the content easy and organized. But we um, also uh, want to implement a, a part of the platform that uh, um, can give you the opportunity to save your content and uh, organize the. Uh, organize it in your folders like uh, I want to uh, run a campaign uh, with my friends um, so I create a folder with uh, and uh, put it inside uh, all the materials uh, that uh, those will be the, the links to the, the various materials around uh, but uh, when I want to run that campaign my uh, all my tools uh, are in this uh, in this folder and uh, easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Accessible. Yeah, we would like the experience to be as smooth as possible. We will have probably uh, the uh, we will have uh, to uh, fix it um, in the uh, along the process. So we will we would like to have uh, many feedback with our uh, with our uh, yes. Users, especially uh, alpha and beta users, we like to have a constant feedback and uh, try to fix uh, every aspect that uh, is not clear, is not confusing, does not work very well. That uh, is something that uh, we really value and uh, we'd like to include it in our workflow. So the, um, the, um, the aim to perfect the organizations at the platform with the feedback of our followers and our users that uh, are the people that uh, will use the platform and so they are the people that uh, more than us probably will know how they want to, the content <clears throat> to be organized how they prefer the content to be organized of course that uh, as many process we we at our uh, um we have uh, some budget we have to increase our budget of course with many issues so it might take uh, more time than other platforms or maybe not it depends uh, but um, we are really sure that we want that uh, to happen so we want uh, to fix uh, all the aspect to improve any any aspect with the for with the uh, with the help of our um, of our member of the member of our platform, it takes yes. uh, one month, uh, one <clears> week. <throat> uh, we will do it. <laughs> Another way to say it, but we will do it because mm -hmm. uh, we want the cust the um, user experience to be as perfect as we can. Yes, so. because uh, we thought that uh, this platform not only uh, will be helpful uh, to other creators and other users but uh, we are users mm -hmm. uh, because we um we uh, like we created this platform not only for the world but uh, also for us because uh, it can uh, help us in our games yeah in, we, uh, we... in our little <laughs> yeah we we think uh, uh, in our perspective that uh, we are the people who like to have organized content and to have uh, uh, and uh, all access to uh, and one way access to all different content. So in that perspective, we are the first that want to achieve that goal to have uh, that uh, <laughs> that uh, perfection. I perfection is impossible to reach, but uh, you. That's a way to to say it. <laughs> yeah. Now, <clears throat> with now bringing, given that given that, I want to shift. I want to shift over to the um to the to the creator end of end of things. Um. Now, with if if I'm understanding this correctly, um, 
early, in in the early phases of this project, you're going to be going. You guys are going to be going through a selection process regarding regarding what gets on and put putting aside um, the of the objectionable material part of it. Is it go, is it going to be a case where there's this, there there are certain preferred formats and the like that you have for submission? Well, uh, at first, uh, our selection is not a, a strict selection on the format. We will provide uh, templates that we will use in the platform and then upgrade uh, with the feedback of creators. But we use a standardized uh, um, formats at first to be um, to have a simple platform. So we use standardized uh, formats that we will improve uh, and uh, maybe um, expand um, um, on the way. <laughs> but And uh, with these uh, formats, with this uh, standardized uh, way to create, uh, for example, a creature, um, to, to not create, but to write a creature, etc., etc., mm -hmm. we just uh, accept uh, the content, but we want to revise that uh, the content is uh, written uh, in uh, good English, that are not typos or that type of uh, problems, and that we do not have um, issues with the open game license. That uh, since our platform operates in will operate in accordance with the open game license, that gives freedom to creators, but also gives many uh, some rules. So we have to also check that these rules are followed and that the content. Is written in, in a good English and does not offend anybody uh, <laughs> using uh, particularly bad words, etc. In that case, our revision. On the other side, we don't want to be uh, a judge. Yes, the content is good. These creatures banner cannot be published. No, we don't want to be that kind of uh, moderators. We just want to moderate content that uh, is. Uh, of bad quality, but uh, objectively bad quality, written in bad English, uh, with typos, with errors in the statistics, uh, very bad errors in the statistics, um, etc. Mm -hmm. In other cases, we will be um, more flexible because we think that uh, every creation should be accepted as soon as it is made uh, with art and does not uh, have the problems that uh, I talked before. No, no, it, uh, <laughs> the way you can uh, explain it uh, as well as I wanted, but uh, yeah, that's our perspective on that side. Yeah. Now, give, given what given what you mentioned, that br that brings up a n another th another thing that I'm curious about is since you is do you have do you have plans on put on putting some sort of style guide type of resource? For um cr for creators so that th so that the presentation of submissions is somewhat consistent. Um yeah we will probably do something like that and also provide uh, an in depth guide to uh maybe uh, create content and also provide uh, all the elements that are present in the um, system reference documents so all the system reference documents. Will be quoted inside the pla inside the the platform, so that uh, anyone can search and understand what are the things that can be used in, in with according with the open game license. What cannot be used? What are the elements presented in the standard, in a system reference document, etc. In that way, we will have uh, at first standardized content. In the future, we will uh, uh, try to have the opportunity to give more flexibility to creators, as I mentioned before, with the opportunity to have more uh, options without confusing the users, because uh, there is a sub line. <laughs> Can I say there is a, a small uh, a small line that separates the confusing uh, layout to a flexi flexible uh, layout. <laughs> And um, we want to be on that line. Uh, in the, right. in that issue. Um, yeah. Now, can, the um, the other thing, the other, one of the other things that I was curious about when it came to the when it came to where I was going with that style guide question is is th things like th is things like say 
material so, material so that when so that when it when it display when it displays on the site it it's able to it's able to be it's able to be integrated or do, or um do you plan do you plan on utilizing um PDF formats in in some in some form and a bit of a fall go ahead yeah no sorry sorry go go ahead thank you well that's that's half of it the the other half is where it is in is in reg a lot of people are using a, a, um affinity these days are and some people are using illustrator and i'm curious if you i'm curious if there are if there are some um some temp some template files that you'll be dis that you'll be distributing to create to prospective creators so uh we are thinking about uh standardizing uh, the way the content is provided on the platform so we would like uh, um to provide or our, our um web pages and do not use uh, uh, pdf files because we think that uh, that might be extracted so all that uh, aspect of uh, protecting content and uh, maintaining content uh, in control of the creators uh, mm -hmm. will not be as effective if we provide that aspect yeah. talking about integration we will also certainly provide uh, that type of um, integrations especially we have uh, already selected uh, a, a group of creators that we know that we appreciate and we wanted to invite and help us to share the um, the word about uh, arcane Mm -hmm. We also selected these creators because we wanted them to test our platform and our integration. Many of them are also illustrators, are artists, they draw, and not only create, but also draw. And so with their help, we will uh, try to reach uh, that uh, um, a creation, uh, um, to improve our creation aspect, uh, including all the elements that they need, that they think that will be helpful for them. So that our uh, it is our objective. <laughs> These days we are uh, concluding our Kickstarter, ban, but from uh, uh, the next week, uh, the coming week, we will start to uh, talk with them and to um, try to understand with them what would be the best layout, the best creation um, interface to uh, provide the content all that uh, why uh, protecting the the content the way we we, we have <clears throat> we have explained before mm -hmm. now the, now um one of the things that you guys mentioned previously was discoverability um and as as which as somebody who ha who has to who has to do a whole lot of um deep diving and sometimes dumpster diving in order, in order to, in order to find things that, that are that are put that are pushing the envelope properly, in within the hobby. Um, it's definitely something that's going to be appealing to me personally. What I'm curious about is the method that you plan that you plan on using when it comes to allowing creators to be easily discoverable by new, by new people. Well, um, that's something that we will have to um, to uh, test. That's something that we think that we have to test uh, to provide the best uh, the best way to provide it. We will probably use uh, um, ways to understand at first what the user likes, but also at the same and so suggest to him content in that way but uh, we at the same time we want to avoid the problem that maybe some content will be hidden by that uh, means and also we will uh, so create in, uh, spaces that will suggest and uh, um, sh share the new uh, upcoming uh, projects or projects that have just been recently published in that way we hope to at the same time, provide a good user experience, but also give space to users to uh, be um, shown. So all the user have their own, their um, their space and their opportunity to be discovered. 
we will mix these uh, these two elements. So um, some parts of the platform will suggest uh, content uh, randomly, or also content that uh, are not been uh, um, that are being just published of or of people that uh, have many have um, not many followers, and the other side. Uh, using algorithm to understand what uh, uh, interests people and uh, uh, providing them that type of content. We will mix these two assets because we value and uh, we care about uh, the to show people uh, new content. So we will have many uh, an, an hybrid approach to to this aspect uh, and try to test it. Talking about uh, talking with creators and user to be as fluid and not chaotic as uh, <laughs> as maybe an an explanation like uh, like mine uh, suggests. We want to be not confusing, but also at the same time mix these two aspects that uh, uh, might be considered uh, polar opposite. I don't know yeah. if I yeah so. Okay, it, so... Uh... This procedure will require a um, pretty complex uh, algorithm or a combination of uh, algorithms uh, that uh, will uh, need to be tested a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we will uh, we will do our, our best with uh, the creators that uh, help us. We have to be sincere about that because. Uh we uh, do not think that uh, a solution that uh, is uh, um, created before the content is published be so before the feedback of the user will be as uh, um, as appropriate as um, as functional as uh, uh, we might think at first so we we recognize that we might have these limits so we cannot think uh, a perfect way to uh, me combine these two elements so we will have to test it with the feedback that is a key aspect especially in the in the following months where we will develop the platform mm -hmm. at first we will have uh, certainly not many contents but um, uh, time goes by we will there will be probably more and more content so that problems will be more consistent and uh, these tests will help us to uh, maintain uh, the the same level of discoverability yeah um i one of the things that one of the things i was curious about on discoverability is because of because of the fact that i think you guys already have a mailing list of of sorts on the on the site um yes about about do, about doing about doing some sort of regularly scheduled um spot um spotlight thing on that on that mailing list um the way that the way that say indiegogo for instance will will send out emails about about uh, about um spotlighting a grab bag of um cr of crowd funds on their site yeah we will probably follow on a pro on similar approach and also combining in platform elements mm -hmm. and another aspect we want uh, to give uh, to creators this is more related to uh, the earning side, it might be <laughs> talk about uh, about in details later. But uh, we also want um, talking about uh, the being uh, a small creator inside Arcane and uh, still uh, having the opportunity to um, earn and then become more popular. We have also the opportunity to subscribe to the profile of creators and receive. Uh, uh, filter the notification so you can't uh, you cannot lose their content we have a, a special feed section only reserved to creators where creators can um, explain and uh, propose their new initiatives and uh, creation to their followers and also the opportunity to tip a creator so uh, our earning side is not only um part of the membership divided to all creators uh, according to some parameters that we as will establish. But also you have the opportunity to uh, tip a creator. And uh, the special aspect is that uh, with your with the standard membership, uh, 
uh, you have a tip included. So you also you will enter a platform with a tip that will be around one dollar that you can give to any creator you want, or you can stack those tips for uh, a year mm -hmm. and then maybe use all of them on uh, specific creators. Then we will have the opportunity to uh, to use uh, to buy more tips and to give. Uh, more creators because you will have one tip each month including in your standard membership and uh, yeah, that in that way you can support any create any creator can be supported uh, um in any case even if you have um, not many followers even if he is small inside the platform it can be supported okay. and he, by anyone using this tipping method is a way also to create maybe crowdfunding initiatives when some creators have to fund a specific project so mm -hmm. users can use those tips so those virtual coins uh, that we call tips to uh, support that crowdfunding initiatives oh, all right and i can i can certainly get behind that i can certainly get behind that um Speaking speaking of that, I'd like to I'd like to ask a bit about um, about the means of following and tr and tracking cre tracking creators. Um, like some of so obviously certain larger platforms have a thing where where they where um where they where they can notify users whenever a, whenever a followed creator um put puts some put something else out. Obviously, YouTube has the whole um, subs as the whole subscription um, set up for when people are putting out um, new material, and now the bell as well, because well, me well, you've well, we've got to go with re we've got to go with the redundancy department of redundancy with that site. But um, do you, when it comes to get when it comes to creators getting feedback from pe from people and and um, and being notified whenever they put out something new something new. Um, is that is that under consideration when it comes to notification tools uh, well, on that aspect we are planning it well we will certainly use approach that uh, work with that uh, are used by other uh, platforms and certainly works but we will also include uh, a feed uh, a certain section that is a feed where creators can interact with their audience or announce specific elements to their audience or the um, or the user itself can receive um, all the notification that you want to receive so um, notification about the publication of a, of a creator you want to get notified etc those uh, will be uh, in integrated inside the platform because we don't want to be a constant pop-up of notification pop-up notification will be uh, present only if the user selected. Otherwise, you can enter the platform, check this news feed, and uh, read the, the, all, that, uh, all the news from uh, its favorite creators, the comment of, the, of uh, its favorite creators, or also the simple notification of uh, many of, the, um, of how certain project and certain aspect are going and in that case he can uh, check this uh, news feed and then uh, decide what content he want to see or in other cases you will have also in uh, the home page the opportunity to see special uh, um, special elements like uh, you know like in netflix that you have your list of films as in a similar way he will have the opportunity to see on that uh, on a specific section all the creation of uh, the, the creators <laughs> that he follows that you want to get notified about so we will also approach in that way of, of course uh, this uh, aspect uh, is uh, um, under development like all the platform and <laughs> that is clear so we might uh, change it according to the feedback we will receive or improve it or uh, maybe have uh, some different direction but uh, it all depends on um yes yeah, the feedback the <laughs> what uh, all the testers we will tell us 
uh, during our uh, development. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, now with that kind of thing in mind, um, what are you sh what are you shooting for as far as as far as a so as far as a soft launch date for the um, for the for the alpha for the alpha version of the of the site? At least when at least when it comes to the um, backers. So we are uh, hoping to uh, uh, reach an alpha version between the end of October and the beginning of November, and uh, uh, have uh, all uh, after a small phase of alpha testing enter into our beta at the end of the year and launch at the start of the new year. Um, probably at the start is also being. It has to be considered also in a beta state, uh, but uh, we will enter. Uh, prog we will progressively. Um, well, <clears throat> we will progressively improve uh, the platform uh, after launch uh, and then enter the official version. Mm -hmm. That's why, because also we wanted to select a uh, few people and give them the opportunity to approach the the platform in small numbers and then gradually increase that number so that we can um, read all the feedback um, and uh, test all the new features we want to include and uh, evaluate their efficiency. So in the alpha, only a small number of people will enter. Then uh, in the first phase of the beta, uh, an higher number will be able to enter and then we will launch and Probably maybe we are still in beta. I hope not, but uh, let's see. <laughs> the development might have some uh, some change of date. Uh, mm -hmm. When we release the platform, we'll give m even more people the opportunity to enter. And uh, of course, uh, when the platform launch, we will have to test it again and again and again to improve all the aspects that we have talked about. Uh, and I I will uh, be. Of course, I will be keeping a close eye on how on how that kind of thing um, de develops. <laughs> Thank you. Um, especially, especially since there's um, there's go there's going there's going to be bugs as there al as there always is. I'm yeah. I'm pretty. Sh are are you fam are you familiar with the programmer's drinking song? Um, no, no, but. Uh... <laughs> I can think of what maybe you talk about. What am I talking 99 about? Ninety-nine little bugs in the code. Ninety-nine bugs in the code. You take one down. You patch it around. One hundred eight little bugs in the code. <laughs> okay. Yes, I, I will uh... have to tell it to our uh, developer friends. We have uh, I'm pretty... many friends that uh, work in that uh, sector, and we w they will love that song. <laughs> <laughs> they will love that song. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm pretty. I am pr I am pr I'm pretty sure th I'm pretty sure that it's a case I'm pretty sure that it'd be a case of cutting a bit deep but um as a philosopher once said truth is the greatest comedy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. But but like I said I will I will be looking forward to it. I'm I'm not going I'm not going to some people, some people would some people would wish some people would wish you the best of the L word. I'm not going to do that. So in lieu of that because I, we are not, we are not a, we are not a jinxing temple. Yeah. The the die the dice that get rolled jinx people enough as it is. Yeah. And with all, but with all of that said, um, I do want, I do want to take this time to congratulate you guys on managing to get over your um goal of five thousand euros currently at five point two thousand, at yeah. the time of this recording. Um, we had we had a really small budget to promote our Kickstarter, and that uh, so we we are because we are putting all the money on the development, mm -hmm. and so we are glad that uh, we we reached our first uh, goal, our goal with Kickstarter, and so that uh, we have uh, a little less pressure on the development side and on the money side. That of course is necessary, and that. That type of, of project, and we hope that uh, with that uh, small achievement, we can uh, then uh, move on um, more easily. It is not easy at all, but uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
gradually we will have um, with this step we have uh, yes. less uh, step by step. stairs yeah step by step process mm -hmm. uh, it is a first step but uh, it is a step uh, <laughs> a consistent a consistent step <laughs> what can i say and uh, and and it it'll cert it'll certainly be It'll certainly be a case of living in interesting times. <laughs> um, yeah. But with all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedules to come to come all the way up to the temple and enjoy the madness at play here, and braving the mists of t of time zone hell. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. To, thank you. Thank you. And any time you see fit to return, whether it's to whether it's to further to further discuss the development of Arcane, or just or just to or just to laugh at, at the etern at the eternal snake bit snake bit bitterness that is the attempts to fit the attempts to fix the ranger, um, the door is always open. Yeah, As I often say you. around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, we, 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 we agree. We, we approve that uh, the statement and we are gr very grateful for your invitation mm -hmm. and we hope to, to return soon on uh, this magic temple. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!